Pour plusieurs enfants, dans la ville isolée de Parakou, au Bénin du Nord, en Afrique de l'Ouest, pays francophone, l'école reste toujours un rêve lointain. Des centaines d'enfants veulent aller à l'école parce qu'ils savent que l'éducation représente la clé d'une réussite dans la vie d'adulte. Malheureusement, assister à l'école, les frais scolaires et les livres coûtent cher et ce n'est pas tout le monde qui peut s'en payer. Voici Bart Sodonsu, le président et le fondateur d'APID, l'association pour l'éducation des enfants en difficulté. Comme adolescent, Bart voulait aller à l'école, mais il avait des problèmes pour gagner assez d'argent afin de subvenir aux besoins de sa famille et en plus de se payer une éducation. Il avait beaucoup de petits boulots, y compris chauffeur de taxi moto, et il a fini par travailler dans un café internet à Paracou où il a commencé à découvrir comment il pouvait se payer l'éducation. Maintenant, Bart fait passer le message à propos des avantages de la scolarisation. APID, l'organisation que Bart a établie, qui collectionne les fonds pour les livres et les frais de scolarité, aide plus de 100 élèves par an à accéder à l'éducation dont ils ont besoin pour avoir un avenir plus beau. En 2010, le BBC World Service a diffusé une série d'émissions sur les cafés Internet qui se trouvent partout dans le monde. L'histoire du café Internet de Bart l'a mené à fonder cette petite organisation caritative réussie. Elle commence ici, dans le café à Paracou, et finit par aider des centaines d'enfants par an à améliorer leur situation eux-mêmes par la voie de l'éducation. Voilà, l'histoire même racontée par le BBC World Service. Of all the world's internet cafes I've been in so far, it was in one of the smallest and most remote in Benin in West Africa that I found the greatest number of human links. Bart and his cafe becomes a hub for those links and the most important were made not online but in person. I know only one thing. My job in Internet Cafe changed many things in my life because I'm the president of an organization where we help students without parents. Bart was 16, the family breadwinner after the death of his father and still at school. He's worked in a quarry, at the railway station and as a motor taxi rider in order to pay tuition fees and for books and food. And despite these tough circumstances, academically he's quite ambitious. I wanted to become a lawyer, but studying to become a lawyer, I need to have my baccalaureate. So when I realized that it is very difficult to continue to drive, I went to see someone who have internet cafe, and uh, he said, that's no problem, but I won't pay you now because you don't know anything on computers. At that point, what did you know? Had you ever used a computer when you went for the job at the Internet Cafe? No, I had never used a computer by myself. So how does this young guy Bart, who doesn't know anything about computers or the Internet, get a job in an Internet Cafe? I asked Julian Achade, then the proprietor of that Internet Cafe, who gave him the job, what it was about Bart that made him seem so worthwhile. He was very polite in my family and in our area here to be polite is very important it is very rare to see a young guy who will say i want to learn this i want to do this without asking you to pay him he kept me on and then i continued and uh, when after i know how to to go on the net how to search and i see i, I start searching for what I, I start searching for help. You know, why I I was going to work is not that I want I wanted to work in the internet cafe just to have money, but I wanted to work because I want to go back to school. I want to continue my education. We should say at this point that whatever you search for, you found because you are now the president of an organization, which is recognized by UNESCO, recognized by the government of Benin. It helps over a hundred children 
in exactly the same position that you were all that time ago. But what did you search for? I searched for help. Yeah, but you can't just put help in Google. Yeah, okay, I just put on Google. I went on Google and I put humanitarian help in education. And then I had so many answers. I choose one of them and I received an email. She advised me to start the group. After she answered me, I realized that this is a, a big opportunity for me, like a door who is uh, being opened for me. Tous ceux qui voudraient nous connaître comme une ONG, une organisation, peuvent passer... But starting a group, as that anonymous woman online in France suggested, was no easy matter. Bart had to go back to the secondary school, which he couldn't afford to attend, and stand in front of classes like a teacher and try and organise support. Well, we're back in the very same classroom in which Bart made his first appeal to his fellow students. Now, talking to a class of 50, he's confident and at ease, and the class is really attentive. Back then, he wasn't well received. People's receive it like uh, I'm pretentious because they see this is a poor boy and he wants to start a group to help another poor boy. How is it possible? And they laughed? And they laughed too much at me. How did you feel when they laughed at you? It made me strong. I took it like a challenge. And then from class to class I invite the student without parent to come to a meeting. Okay, so you you have these meetings. Do you really know how to start an organization for educational charity? No, I didn't know anything. I did the meeting because the, the woman asked me to start a group and to start a group I need more people with me. This is the woman in France who you met online. You don't know who she is. Where is she now? I hope she's listening to this. I don't know and I, I never know it because after the meeting I wrote her again and she never answered. She's disappeared? Yes, she never answered and uh, what, what, what was wrong I didn't, I didn't know and uh, something said stop with the group and something said continue and I choose to continue. So I sat with the, the, the group. And uh, I continued looking for help. So after the first meeting, we had another meeting to have our constitution, to have our rules, and uh, to be registered officially in Benin. And I continued to work in the civil. And then, you know, I meet another, not online, but in the Internet Cafe, who now helped my organization, help change my life, and change more than a hundred students like. You know, after the laughing from the people in the class, I did a promise for myself. I would not like to see another people in the same situation like me here in Paragou. The other important element in Bart's internet cafe life is who he met physically while he was working there. He's a networker, is Bart. He put the computer network into the little hotel where I stayed, for example. But the people he helped get online in the Paracu Internet Cafe quickly became contacts and friends. 